After the end of the Second World War, a number of war crimes trials took place, in which the perpetrators of the Holocaust were brought to justice. Only a very small percentage of concentration camp guards and staff were ever sentenced for their crimes, and still today a very small few are being processed by the courts, but the defendants are well into their 90s. There was one man who was brought to trial in 1946 at the age of 74, who was involved in sadistic medical experiments at Dachau. Klaus Schilling was never a member of the Nazi party, but despite this he was sentenced to death as a war criminal and as a man who committed crimes against humanity. He was regarded as a recognised researcher at the Robert Koch Institute before the outbreak of World War II, but as the conflict began he indulged in sadistic human experiments that caused a huge degree of suffering and death. Join us today as we look at the vengeful execution of Klaus Schilling, Dachau's Dr. Death. Remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Klaus Schilling was born in Munich on the 5th of July 1871, and as a young man he studied medicine at university in his home city, before he received a doctorate at the age of 24. He then became a professor of parasitology at the University of Berlin, and became a member of the Malaria Commission of the League of Nations. However, he then became an international doctor and was practicing medicine in areas of Africa colonized by the Germans. He was interested in particular in tropical medicine and malaria and how to stop this and he began to become celebrated in this field. He in 1905, before the First World War began, worked at the Robert Koch Institute as the first director of tropical medicines and he remained here in this position for over three decades. Whilst inside of this, he developed new ideas and theories, but then retired in 1936. At the time in Germany, Hitler had come into power, but Schilling was attracted to one of Nazi Germany's greatest allies. Schilling moved to fascist Italy, as he was presented with the opportunity to conduct experiments on prisoners of psychiatric institutions in Mussolini's country. Mussolini and his army were beginning to get worried about malaria that caused problems within the Italian army, who were fighting the Italo-Ethiopian War. Schilling began to conduct a number of experiments on these patients, with the hope of helping the Italians restrict problems associated with the disease. He was rewarded by the Nazis for helping their allies research solutions to their problems, and the Nazis gave him financial grants in the hope that his work would also benefit Hitler's Wehrmacht. Following a meeting with the Nazi health chief, Leonardo Conti, Schilling came back to his homeland in 1941, and he then began to work again on malaria research. But instead of carrying out disturbing experiments on psychiatric patients, his research and work would take him into the concentration camp system. Inside of Dachau, Schilling was given a special malarial research station, and it was Himmler himself who allowed him inside of the camp to conduct his work. Many of his colleagues would criticise Schilling, but he remained in charge of the department throughout the whole of the war. In the 1930s, Schilling had stated that malarial research could be done in a harmless fashion on human subjects. However, at Dachau, his experiments were sadistic and unethical. At the camp, prisoners were drafted into the unit, and they were injected with a number of synthetic drugs at different doses. Some were given very high doses of different drugs, and others were given lethal amounts, which would often leave them in a catatonic state, or even dead. After these injections, the patients were then exposed to malaria in a rather bizarre and sadistic way. They had cages filled with malarial mosquitoes strapped to their hands and arms, to make sure they were then infected by the parasite. The scale of the medical trials was huge, and more than 1,000 prisoners were deliberately infected with malaria, a deadly disease for Schilling's research. Klaus Schilling's supposed research resulted in between 300 to 400 of these prisoners being killed, and a number of them were affected for the rest of their lives by his work, being permanently disfigured or injured. During Schilling's experiments, a number of priests who had been incarcerated inside of Dachau were executed and killed by his experiments. Dachau itself was a camp where over 180,000 prisoners would pass through the gates, but over 41,000 were killed there. It was a brutal camp where there was much fear and terror, with constant floggings and public executions forcing the prisoners to fall into line. 
Other forms of punishment included the standing cells, but Schilling's work helped to contribute to the terror. After the liberation of Dachau, Schilling was arrested, and at this point he was around the age of 73. He was an elderly man by the standards of the other defendants in war crimes trials, but regardless of not joining the Nazi party, he was brought to trial. During the Dachau proceedings, he was tried by a US military court, and along with 39 other defendants who worked at Dachau, he was brought towards a judge. The proceedings began on the 15th of November 1945, and Schilling and the other defendants all pleaded not guilty. Over the course of the trial, a number of witnesses and former prisoners came forward to testify about the evils inside of Dachau, including the terrible living conditions, the executions and punishments, and also the medical experiments that took place there. Klaus Schilling was seen as a slightly obscure defendant, as at the age of 74 he was the oldest, and despite not being a Nazi party member, or member of the SS, he was lumped in with the other war criminals. Schilling said he did not deny that he carried out the experiments, and admitted he had done this in the interest of science, and that suffering of the prisoners was done purely to advance medicine. Because of this, he even shockingly asked the court to allow him to finish his research and to write down his experiments. He said that he had nothing to do with Dachau itself and the evils that emerged inside the camp, and claimed that he did it purely for science. He stated, I've worked out this great labour. It would be really a terrible loss if I could not finish my work. I don't ask you as a course. I ask you personally to do what you can, to do what you can to help me, that I may finish this report. I need only a table and chair and a typewriter. It would be an enormous help for science and for my colleagues, and a good part to rehabilitate myself. After this, he cried begging to finish his work, to regain his reputation. Schilling beforehand, let's remember, was a well-respected international professor, but inside the Nazi regime, he became just another war criminal. The courtroom sentenced Klaus Schilling to death, rejecting his pleas. It was heard that the prisoners he used were from Poland, the Soviet Union and Yugoslavia, and at the time there was no formal code of ethics regarding medical research that the doctor could be held accountable to. But it was clear he was involved in the mistreatment of prisoners, and that his actions led to the deaths of hundreds. On the 13th of December 1945, Klaus Schilling was sentenced to death by hanging, and his execution took place on the 28th of May 1946. He was held inside of Landsberg Prison, and this would be the place where he was executed. Inside of the courtyard of the prison, a large gallows had been set up, and it was on these gallows where hundreds were executed on. These gallows took the lives of many Nazi war criminals, and Klaus Schilling would be one of those. He was led out of his prison, and was flanked by US Army guards, and many prison officers, who looked on in the courtyard. He was also accompanied by a priest, who went with him to his death. Schilling then had his identity confirmed, before he made his way up the steps, and was handed over to the executioner. He had his arms tied behind his back, before an executioner placed a black hood over his head, and then the noose, which was attached to the gallows. Schilling was then shuffled over the trap door, before very quickly the executioner pulled the lever, and he plunged through the structure to his death. After his execution, doctors confirmed his death, and his remains were then placed in a coffin, marked Dr. Schilling, Klaus. Despite never joining the Nazi party or the SS, Klaus Schilling was treated like other Nazi war criminals. He was a man who claimed for his research that it was necessary to kill hundreds of innocent people, which was ridiculous to consider. During the course of his work in Dachau, over a thousand prisoners were deliberately infected with a dangerous disease that could kill, and they were also injected with a variety of medications that were often lethal. He was 74 when he went to the gallows at Landsberg Prison, and Klaus Schilling's execution remains a compelling one, and one that is slightly different to other Nazi war criminals. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, Thank you so much for watching.